Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. Are freezing temperatures good or are they bad for your soil? We'll talk about it in today's Farm Basics. All right, so as a human being, I like the weather to be warm. It's much more fun when it's warm outside and I don't have to worry about slipping on the ice or anything like that. But honestly, as a farmer, I want it cold. I want no snow out there. I want it so cold that the frost goes way deep down in the ground. And the reason why is because I want that temperature, that freezing temperature to kill insects, to kill diseases, and also to help me just a little bit with my soil compaction. Well, you think about it, in the winter in the northern part of the United States where we live, it's wonderful. There are no mosquitoes. There are no bugs flying around. They're all dead because it's freezing. But if it gets really, really cold, even their eggs, even their larvae that are down in the soil could be at least partially killed. Now, obviously, nature has developed a lot of things because there's bugs every year. Obviously, some are going to survive, but many are going to perish on the harshest of winters. So there are some perks when it gets really cold. Yeah, so again, controlling diseases and insects, we can partially do that with really cold temps. Now, I mentioned the snow, and the reason why this is important is because if there's a lot of snow cover, then the frost doesn't go as deep down in the ground. So again, it all depends kind of on what we're after. If the frost goes really deep, then it takes longer for that frost to come out in the spring, and that can delay our planting, so I don't like that. However, on the other hand, I do like when it goes really deep because then it does kill more insects and more diseases. Now, I also mentioned it can help us a little bit with soil compaction, but just understand when we have compaction, the whole freeze, thaw activity, some people think, oh, it's going to eliminate all my compaction. No, it's not, because all it does is it raises things or lowers things. So that's pretty much it. So your compaction layer, if it's horizontal, it's pretty much going to stay there. It's just going to move a little bit up or down. It's not going to eliminate it. Might help just a little bit, though. And it is going to matter if it's wet or if it's dry. If you've got yeah. moisture, in the soil, that's going to expand and contract. If there's no moisture in the soil, you aren't going to get a whole lot of expansion and no. contraction out there. No, but I would say if there's not a lot of moisture in the soil, then it allows the frost to go deeper because it takes longer to change the temperature on water than it does just on soil and air. So I, again, there's good and bad with that moisture in the soil. Okay, the timing of the snow is really important. So we've got alfalfa on the farm. Sometimes we'll plant winter wheat, and if you've got a crop that you want to survive the winter, having a protective covering of snow is a pretty nice thing. So we'd love the snow to come first and the bitter cold to come after when you've got that nice blanket over the top. But if it's the other way around, you could see some winter kill out in the alfalfa fields or in the winter wheat or winter crops. So you can see as farmers, we're a little conflicted. We want for our crop to have the snow there on those fields and the frost doesn't go deep. But where we don't have some crop growing over the winter, we want the frost to get deep down in the ground, have no snow cover and kill as many diseases and insects as we can. Well, one thing all farmers can agree on, if you've got our Weed of the Week in your field, you need to get it under control. We'll show you how to do that later in the show.